worm its way into my house. And whoever might be offering me three hundred and fifty dollars for Grandmother Wetmore's high boy, what? as I'm sitting right here. Why, Julia Gibbs! You did. Why that big thing? I didn't know what to do with it. I was going to give it to cousin Hester Wilcox. Well, you're going to take the money, are you? Oh, I don't know. Three hundred and fifty dollars. What has come over you? Well, if I can, t if I can get the doctor to take the money and go away someplace, I'll sell it like that. You know, Myrtle, it's been a dream of my life to see Paris, France. Oh, it sounds crazy, I suppose. But once in a life, you should get the chance. Yeah. Well, what did the doctor say about it? Well, I did beat about the bush a little bit. I told him if I ever got a legacy, that's how I put it, that he'll have to take it. And what did he say? Oh, you know how he is. I haven't heard a decent thing out of him since I met him. No, he said, my make him disconnected from Grover's Corner to go traipsing about Europe like that. Every two years, he goes to Civil War, Civil War battles, and not enough treat for anybody, he says. Well, Mr. White just admires the way that Doc Gibbs knows all about the Civil War. It inspired me to conduct his own researcher, research on the, on the Napoleon. Well, truth, yes. Doc Gibbs is never so happy as when that Auntie Anne will get it. Myrtle, the times I've walked over those hills, piecing it all out, stuffing it in every bush, like we was going to buy it. Well, if that second name man is so intent on buying it, Julia, you sell it. And then you'll get to see Paris, all right. Just keep dropping the place from time to time. That's how I got to see myself the Atlantic Ocean, you know. Well, I am sorry I mentioned it. Only it seems to me, like once in a life before you die, you ought to see a country where they don't speak in English, and they don't even want to. Thank you very much, ladies. Now I'll skip a few out. But first, I want a little more, more information about our town. Sort of scientific kind, you might say. Dear Webb is editor and publisher of the Grover's Corner Sentinel. That's a local paper, you know. How are you, George? Well, George Gibbs let himself have quite the conversation, didn't he? How old would George be? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. He must be almost 16. Mama, I mean speech and class today. I was very good. You must recite it to your father at supper. What was it about? The Louisiana Purchase. It was like silk office school. I'm going to make speeches all my life. Mama, are these big enough? Try to get them a little bigger. Mama, will you answer me a question serious? Seriously, dear, not serious. Seriously, will you? Of course. Mama, am I good looking? Of course you are. All my children have got good features. I'd be ashamed if they hadn't. Mama, that's not what I mean. What I mean is, am I pretty? I've already told you, yes, you have a nice, young, pretty face. And a purse, which foolish. Oh, Mama, you never tell us the truth about anything. I am telling you the truth. Mama, were you pretty? I was, actually, if I do say so myself. I was the prettiest girl in town next to me in class. But Mama, you've got to say something about me. Am I pretty enough to get anybody, to get people interested in me? Emily, you make me tired. You don't stop it. You're pretty enough for all normal purposes. Now, go on, you're pretty enough. Mama, you're no help at all. Now, I think this is a good time to tell you about the car wreck.
will be able to come here on Tuesday and attend to the spread of Hershey's web. Show your hands. George, that will be done. Yes, Pop. And remember on Sunday to take the second verse, you'll stop the start of Diana. Oh, thank you so much. Oh. Thank you. 